Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're planning to grow your business online, you probably have heard of Google Ads and thought, what are all these campaign types? Trust me, you are not alone. Between search, performance max, display, shopping, and all the other types, it can get a bit overwhelming when you're not aware of it. In this video, I will be covering all about these campaign types, how they work, and what is the right fit for your business depending upon your goal. So let's dive in. Let's dive in with arguably the most common type, search campaigns. When you think of Google, you think of searching, right? That's where search campaigns can come in. These are basically the text-based ads that you see at very bottom or top of a Google search result page when you type in a specific query. Let's take an example. I have typed in digital advertising services and the first three results that I'm seeing are the sponsored results. So when you see sponsored on top of any search result, that means it's an advertising placed by an advertiser to promote his business. Other example could be, I typed in create a new website. So all the website builders have placed their ads on Google, which take play, which take the first three spaces in the Google search result page. And if you scroll down, you would see that even at the bottom, there are some sponsored ads placed by the other advertisers who couldn't win the top page result, but they are still placed on the bottom. So by now, I'm pretty sure you know where the search ads show in the Google search result page. Now let's discuss how these work. Search ads are triggered by keywords, and these keywords are usually the words or phrases that a user searches for. Let's take an example. Let's say I have a digital marketing agency and I want my ads to show when someone searches for digital marketing services. So I would just have the digital marketing service as a keyword in my campaign. And from next time when someone searches for digital marketing services, my ads would show up. It's as simple as that. Now the best part of search ads is that the intent of a user is quite high because it's not that you are showing the ads to the user when they are not willing to, because when they have searched for it, that means they are not just there for browsing. They are actively looking out for something. And at that time, the intent is really high for them to con convert. So that's the real power of search ads. You, you, they connect you to the people who are actually ready to take an action. Next up after search in line is performance max campaign. This is a relatively new addition to Google ads and it's kind of a big deal. But before we get into that, we are going to cover all the other campaign types first. Trust me, once you understand those performance max will make a lot more sense. Next up is the demand gen campaign. It's also fairly new and is designed for more visual discovery based platforms like YouTube, Google Discover and Gmail. Let's look at a few quick examples. So if you open Gmail and under promotion tabs, you see a sponsored ad that is demand gen. Even under the social tab, if you see something like sponsored, it's a demand gen campaign. So once you navigate to YouTube and you're scrolling through your shots and you come up something with the sponsored ad, that's also demand gen. And under YouTube, when you see something on a home page with sponsored written in front of it, that's also an example of a demand gen campaign. And last, when you are watching some video and you see a sponsored ad over here, that's to a demand gen campaign. Now you know where your demand gen ads show up. Let's discuss how it works. Demand gen campaign creates demand by putting your product, brand or offer in front of the people even though they don't need it yet. In search ads, we used to provide keywords, but in demand gen, we provide images, videos and other creative assets that Google AI used to show ads to the audiences based on their interest, behavior and past interaction. Now the question can be why even demand gen? Let's say I launched a brand. It's pretty new. No one knows about it yet. So the chance of someone searching for my brand online, it's pretty low. Yeah, they can search about the product that I offer, but there are already a lot of competitors who are bidding on those keywords. And let's face it, you people usually buy from the brand they recognize. That is where the demand gen kicks in. Let's assume someone is scrolling through YouTube and they see your ad. They can ignore it once, twice, thrice or four times. But believe me, at this time, your brand has started to kick in. Now they know that your brand exists. So next time when they are searching for the product that your brand offers, they might search for your brand directly on Google or they might search for the product that you offer and see your ad on Google and make a purchase on your website. So this conversion might not be attributed to demand gen, but demand gen has played a huge role in getting to that conversion. So if you are creating a marketing strategy, keep demand gen in your marketing mix because it can be a real game changer for you. Next up, you have the display campaigns. You can basically think of these as the visual side of Google ads. They are image or video ads that appear across vast network of websites, apps, and even Gmail. Let's look at a few examples to understand display ads more clearly. Let's start with the Times website. 
as we browse, we might notice visual advertisements displayed across the page. For instance, there is an ad boss ad at the top of the page. And as we scroll down further, we see that there's another ad space occupied by boss to promote its product. We are scrolling down even more and we came across another ad from another brand. So these are the designated ad spaces, which these different brands are using to promote their offerings. And this is what we call display advertising. Now let's look at another example. This is a blog featuring the best workout clothes for women in 2025. As we scroll through this page, we will see multiple brands being advertised. For example, the brand on has an ad featured here. Let's scroll further down. We can see Tommy Hilfiger is also promoting its product. So these are the great examples of display ads placed on the websites that are relevant to their brand niche or target audience. Lastly, let's look at one more website. This is the Expedia website. Here again, you will find different advertisements placed throughout the site in variety of sizes and formats. In all these cases, the key point is that the visual ads are not the part of the core website content. Instead, they are specifically placed to promote a product or brand. Now you know about display ads, let's discuss when to use them. When your goal is to increase visibility, brand awareness, or reach people who have already interacted with your website. They are basically to reach the people who are doing other things online. They could be, you know, reading a blog, watching a video, checking the weather and boom, your ad shows up. So let's take an example that someone visited your website, but didn't convert. You can use display ads to remind them to come back to your website and convert. It's like giving a second chance to your brand to stay on top of the mind of a user. So how to use them? You provide images, headlines and call to actions in Google and Google uses them to display your ads in million of websites and apps that are registered with Google Display Network. In display ads you can target by interest, placements, behavior or even specific websites. After covering search, demand gen and display campaigns, let's now talk about the shopping campaigns. For an e-commerce business, shopping campaigns can be a real game changer. These are highly visual ads that showcase your actual product along with its detail in Google search result. Let's take a look at an example. When we search for shoes, we can see sponsored shopping ads appearing right at the top of the search result page. If we switch to image tab, once again, the top results are taken up by the shopping ads. And in the shopping tab itself, as expected, the space is fully dedicated to these product ads. There's another place where shopping ads can appear, which is YouTube. I couldn't find the live example. So here is a screenshot that shows how these ads are displayed on the platform. So if you run an e-commerce store and want to boost visibility and sales, I think shopping ads are an essential part of your marketing strategy. So you might have seen these shopping ads every now and then while making searches on Google or finding some product. They are really effective when it comes to an e-commerce business. I would say it is a must have when you have an e-commerce business store. How they work is you have to upload or register your products in Google Merchant Center. You have to provide your images, product details, prices, shipping details, each and everything. And once your product is approved, you are eligible to show ads on those products. And again, it's not like you have to provide some keywords. Google matches the queries that user searches with the product details and shows your ad. The next campaign type is video ads. Like the name says, these are the ads that show up in video format and they mostly appear on YouTube. We won't be diving too deep into this one. And the reason for this is Google is phasing out standalone video campaigns. This change is to be expected by end of Q2 2025. So in the future, if you want to run video ads, so you would have to do it by a demand gen campaign. You can simply choose video only inventory over there and your ads will still show up in the video placements like YouTube. As we have covered all the campaign types, let's talk about the one that we planned for the end, the performance max campaign. Imagine instead of creating separate search, shopping, display, YouTube campaigns, you can target all those inventories through just one campaign. Yes, that is possible through the performance max campaign. It's an all in one campaign that was designed to maximize your performance across all these platforms through a single campaign. So how does it work? You provide Google with your images, videos, descriptions, headlines, CTAs, each and everything. And Google AI combine those assets to create an ad to show on different platforms so as to maximize the convergence for your business. It learns what's happening over time and based on the headlines which get more click or images or videos which get more conversion, it keeps on optimizing each and every asset that you have provided to create a best possible ad and show it to the users for maximized conversion. So now let's talk about when to use performance marks. Number one, when your goal is clear, what you have to achieve. Second, when you have to tap all the inventories of Google 
to a single campaign without the hustle of creating separate campaign type and when you are concerned about results more than micromanaging each placement and keyword all the performance match is quite strong but before implementing it just keep in mind that you will be losing out on a lot of control because google ai would be implementing maximum amount of things for you Although the performance would be great, but the transparency is limited. Now we have covered each and every type of campaign that Google has to offer, how it works, when to use it. Still, if you have any questions, do let me know in the comment section. And please don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel for more such videos.